Okay, we are going to start our class uh, with, without wasting time because everybody's time is precious. Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about evidence. Okay, this is one of your important CLP paper. I'm sure you know by now. Okay, so uh, I would like to make some disclaimers before uh, the starting of this class. Okay, first of all, I'm just a junior lawyer. I'm just in year one of my practice. And I do not guarantee the quality of this teaching may suit your need at the end, all right? I do not also guarantee the accuracy of this information provided during this lecture uh, because, uh, as you know, first thing, the law is uh, evolving from time to time. And second thing is because of my personal uh, experience, maybe it's not uh, adequate. Therefore, there might be some errors, huh? in the teaching itself. But uh, rest assured, I did my research already. Hopefully, I'm not misleading you all, all right? And this is just a guide, but not academic reference, okay? And um, this is the outline of the lecture. I'm going, going to bring your attention to this uh, evidence act itself as an overall view, okay? Uh, this is very important because during examination, you must be familiar with this piece of evidence act. Otherwise, um, this is evidence act, you know, it's not evidence law in general. So you are seriously required to be familiarized with the where to look for the particular section and also provision. If you do not put in the proper the accurate uh, provision of the law, you cannot get through evidence uh, paper. Simple as that. All right. And uh, I'm going to talk about the application of uh, this evidence act and also some concepts of evidence uh, law. All right. And uh, here, say, I don't think today I can do it because uh, uh, I realized that the, the slides already a lot. I need to finish by two hours. Otherwise, uh, you are not paying attention as well. Okay, we'll put the hearsay in uh, our next lecture. All right. So, see a lot of people joining. Okay. Actually, if you look at this uh, evidence act itself, it is a codified, codified version of the laws of a procedural law. That means to say this law itself, uh, govern how the evidence should be given in the court, you know. It is a codification. That means to say this is uh, uh, talking about from the starting of the evidence itself and then going to the court and then the court, of course, will have a certain process, isn't it? And then the judge evaluate the uh, evidence itself and what is the outcome? What is the bearing or weight of that particular uh, evidence? So you must try to dissect the evidence act. Uh, actually, I don't think you need to dissect. It is being dissected for you already by the uh, draft man. Okay? Uh, and it contains of three parts. The first part, Super duper important, important. This is about the relevancy of evidence. Okay. You can talk about any facts that you want in your daily practice. I can talk to you that what I have done today, but you cannot bring the grandmother's story to the court. You need to filter the information uh, before you can actually submit whatever evidence into the court. Reason why we have this sort of evidence act is because of practical and time constraint. Court, every time allocate a few days for a particular case. For example, if you want to go to trial, it does not last like indefinitely, isn't it? The court will allocate how many days that you actually need to put forward your arguments. So there is a time constraint there. So the court has really no time to listen to all the stories, you know, okay, regarding to myself, my wife, my kids, my grandmother, to that level. No, 
Okay, so the first part is about the relevancy of the evidence, uh, very important. And the second part is how do you bring this evidence and prove to the court that it is a uh, be believable version. Okay, we don't talk about false or uh, truth here. Uh. This is not something that the court will evaluate. Okay, the court will actually see this mode of proof, how you bring a the evidence to the court subjected to the criteria, okay? For example, um, documents that you wanted to bring to the court to, to, to let the court, I mean, the judge believe that this is real. The best one will be the original version of document. But however, there are also provisos saying that if you do not have the original copy of the document, what should you do next? So this uh, Evidence Act itself uh, already teach you and guide you how to do, okay? And then part three is the production and also the effect of evidence itself, okay? Uh, so we have a run-through first, a uh, very quick run-through, okay? Um, the most important uh, section uh, for chapter one is actually your section three, interpretation okay very very important you can find a lot of definitions for example what is a fact what is so-called relevant what does it mean by proof from this section so please do yourself a favor read this uh, section three many many times until you really understand what is it about Okay, and uh, once still, we are under the, what we call the part one re relevancy and the relevant uh, sections uh, uh, for this is actually uh, section 5 to 16. I don't know why I put, uh, uh, actually section 5 to 55, okay, 55, okay. These are all the relevant Proviso. That means to say, if your evidence for any into any of this proviso in between section five up to fifty five, it is deemed to be relevant and it is admissible in the court. All right. I repeat myself again. Many many evidence uh available in in a particular case, all right? So the guiding principles was already laid down in this particular Evidence Act 1950, range from the fifth, the section five to section 55, all right? We'll go through one by one. For example, you have your section six, relevancy of facts forming part of the uh, same transaction. Sometimes this uh, section also called uh, I mean, as a codified version of your common law, rest geste principle. Section 7, the occasion, cause, or effect of a particular fact and issue. The section 8, motive, etc. Up to section 55, eh? okay? All these are admissible, you know. All these are deemed to be relevant, okay? Do not think just, uh, because I know some of the textbook will only write uh, section 5 to maybe just up to section 12. Oh, then you confine your mind thinking that, oh, the relevancy is only uh, uh, 5 to 12. Uh, I mean, section 5 to section 12. This is wrong. Uh. All section 5 until section 55 are relevant. Uh, okay? Please bear that in mind. Okay? And then we have uh, emission and confessions. Uh, this is also provided uh, in your evidence act itself. You can refer to the, the statute that you are holding now. Okay. Whenever you see uh, a question that you can actually zoom into this topic, uh, please, uh, that's why you need to be familiarize yourself with this law. So you, 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 you go to these sections, you know, section 17 to section 31 to talk about emissions and confessions, okay? Of course, uh, this will not be, uh, be covered today in a detailed manner, okay? We will have other class la, to cover this.
Okay, and uh, statements by person who cannot be called as witness. This is something to do with your hearsay exception. Okay, very popular question. Okay, please um uh, uh read the heading, and also at least uh, at least you must know what is the title. Okay, for example, I show to you section thirty two, cases in which statement of relevant fact by person who is dead or cannot be found. Etc. Et huh? You see or not? There is a etc. Et is relevant. Okay? So, um, try to read uh, the index of this evidence act very, very frequently in order for you to master okay, this uh, uh, paper. Okay? And statement made under special circumstances, okay, uh, like for example, the books of like pound, any uh, entry of public record, okay, for example, the book, uh, entry book by commissioner for oath, okay, uh, land registry, the one that you have signed, uh, those are deemed to be public record and map charts plan. Uh, etc. So this is all under the heading of still relevancy, but under the heading of statements made under special circumstances. Okay, so those things are relevant, you know, even the uh, statement uh, as to any law contained in law books also is relevant because sometimes during the trial, we may want to cite some uh, when we raise objection or there is an argument okay, with the opposing counsel, so we can actually cite uh, whatever law that contained in law books. Okay? So if you do know people object, then you are difficult. Lah, all right? And how much uh, of a statement to be proved? Huh? Uh, so these are also one of the heading, but not so popular chapters. Lah. And uh, this question, I think, came at can uh came out in the past before in which uh I mean whether the judgment of the previous uh, I mean previous judgment okay um is relevant or not let's say for example the um the same plaintiff and defendant they have many many cases okay any relation by right every case will stand on its own but somehow or rather because there is some overlapping of the facts. I mean, of uh, let's say, for example, Chi and Gan uh, have three cases, you know, um, open each other. Lah. I sue Gan, lah, for example, three cases. Each case A, case B, case C, by right, should stand on its own. However, somehow or other, we can borrow the judgment. Let's say I already finished case A, and then I got a judgment in favor of myself. And then somehow or other, I can use this judgment uh, to support my, my case in the case B or case C. Okay? So, uh, this is, uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, available in, uh, um, provided under your subsection uh, 40 to uh, 44. All right? And uh, section 45, to 51 are pertaining to your expert opinions, okay? By right, uh, the witness, for example, if you call a witness to a court, okay, regardless if it is a criminal trial or it is a civil trial, you have to classify the witness into two categories. The first one is factual witness. He is only talking what he see what he had listened, what he got uh, feed, I mean, touch lah, your five senses, okay? I hope you know what is the five perspective uh, uh, sense lah. That means your eyes, your nose, your tongue, your touch, etc. And your ears, okay? Those are five senses. You cannot say something that I think, uh, I think, um, you know, if let's say, for example, this is a murder case, you you call a witness and suddenly the witness go and say something like, uh, in my opinion, or dalam pendap pada pendap saya, saya rasa dia bunuh, uh, itu accuse bunuh tu victim kot, si mangsa kot. Good. And then something that you think, 
Okay, like that cannot. Huh? Those categories of witness are actually belong to opinion or expert witness. Okay, you can understand. Huh? Factual witness and opinion. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, factual witness and also expert witness. These are two different categories. Huh? And if you are answering this sort of question, you need to cross-refer to your rules of court or your CPC depends on the question whether it is frame, uh, it is a criminal case or it is a civil case, because there are certain guidelines. Okay, that's how uh I feel. I mean, retrospectively, I feel why the marks for uh CLP is so strict. Okay, because practically you have to combine um. So, uh, CPC rules of court plus evidence. It's just not just whatever your book had written, okay? And uh, character evidence, for example, okay? Uh, this is also a popular question because uh, anyhow, I hope you have listened uh, to this maxim uh, by now. Uh, the court is just a trial of the matter itself. It's not a person. That means to say, whether I'm guilty or not, it's not just because I'm good, I'm kind, you know, I give free teaching, but it is about whether I kill my wife or not, okay? I'm so sorry that I use my wife a lot uh, to give an example. I think she's the safest person that uh, will not sue me, all right? So, uh, take for example, I did murder my wife. So, is this sort of character... Uh, evidence of the accused, me lah, will be relevant or not. So there are, of course, some rules that govern it. This is under your section uh, 52 to 55, okay? I think uh, upcoming class, we will have opportunity to cover it, okay? And part two, uh, part two of uh, uh, your, how, how to say, your uh, evidence act, is it is about proof, okay? Every evidence that you want to bring to court, please remember this very clearly. Every single evidence that you wanted to bring to the court must be proved by the person that alleged so. Take for example, again, I sue Mr. Gunn for breach of contract. So, I must produce proof that support there is a contract, which term had been breached by Gun, and what are the damages that I have suffered as a result of that breach. So, every evidence I cannot just tell the court, oh, you know what? There's an agreement uh, signed that day between me and Gun. And then Gan did not fulfill his obligation. Therefore, uh, the court should give me and should believe whatever I have said. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Every fact must be proved unless, unless, okay, unless it is fall under section 56, 57, 58, and additionally, now you have section 73 AA, okay? Section 56, 57 means judicial notice. The court itself, ambit maklum. That means to say, I think this is a common knowledge. Lah, and this is sufficiently notorious for me to know. For example, Malaysia is located, you know, in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. You do not need to show to the court this statement. Okay. Let's say I allege that Malaysia is located in Southeast Asia. By right, according to the principle, every single evidence must be proved. Ma. So I have to show a map to the court. It looks silly, isn't it? And somehow or rather, because judiciary uh, has got integrity, you know, the reputation is very important. So somehow or rather, some facts that is so commonly, everybody know, lah, no dispute 
nobody is going to challenge one. That means to say, um, even the kid knows ah, Malaysia is located in Southeast Asia. The court will make maklum, tak payah dibuktikan. Okay? The other section is section 58 that I have said. Uh, usually in civil cases, when the opposing uh, party admits a fact, that means sudah ada pengakuan, sudah mengakui certain, certain fact, facts because we have a uh, fakta yang telah dipersetujui. That means you, we both agree lah, not, not to waste time, you know, drag around the matters because everybody's time is precious. So those facts, no need to prove. So you do not need to produce evidence to support it. Okay? And also section 73AA for your criminal trial. This is a, a additional, the new uh, amended act uh, in which when the parties, that means to say the Prosecution and also the defense counsel they sat down together. Uh, they have a written uh, con uh, they reach a written cons consensual. Okay, for example, certain certain fact, no need to prove. Uh, this thing you you cannot dispute later. Okay, later. And uh, your oral evidence. Okay, by right. Uh, if you call any witness, uh, that sort of witness must give oral evidence in the court okay you cannot uh for example if you acting uh, as a dpp deputy public prosecutor your witness list will include your uh investigating officer you know the recording officer that take the section 112 statement etc and then you have your saksi tambahan your chemist all that all those person must actually give oral evidence in the court not in return you know because we the witness itself need to undergo eic examination in chief cross examination and finally end with re-examination so this is the standard process uh, why is it so uh, because the, the 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 court is a place where uh, there is a natural justice, you know. There's a right to be heard as well as right to be to challenge what the other parties have said. Okay, so this is the opportunities. Uh, equal chance, fair game for uh, both parties, either in civil suit or criminal suit. Okay, very simple. Eh? And Documentary evidence. Uh, documentary evidence, I think you need to master it quite well because um, a lot of documents uh, in practice, regardless if it's a civil case or criminal case, civil even more. Sometimes it is very common for you to see thousand pieces of uh, paper in just one case. Okay, So the rules that govern the relevance, uh, relevancy, of course, is very important. And how is this supposed to be brought to the court? It is another issue, okay? Otherwise, uh, sometimes if your documents are being marked as a uh, ID, ID, that means to say, uh, 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 the document sometimes is uh, in bagian C, in civil case, and you do not call your witness uh, to testify this document uh, is made by that particular person, one, then your evidence has no value. Then your case uh, probably cannot sustain in the court. Okay, this is how it is. Huh? All right, and public document. Uh, public document, of course, uh, it's not like private documents. It's just certified copies. Uh, some, some documents, you cannot bring it to the court, isn't it? Sometimes you give a photostat copy. So uh, in order to prevent the opposing counsel to challenge it. Sometimes you have deadline, you have certified by your ketua jabatan, and it is deemed to be admissible. So this is all how you prove these sort of documents in court. Okay, that's why it is fall under your part two. Okay, uh, model proof, lah, to put it very simple, is how you bring this, this piece of evidence to the court in the right way. Okay. And uh, you have presumptions, okay? Presumptions is 
a very interesting topic. I have to admit to you that uh, when I was studying uh, CLP, I got confused a lot because um, by right, uh, let's say, for example, it is a criminal case, okay, uh, as we all uh, should know by now because we have completed our LB, isn't it? Prosecution will bear the burden to prove the guilt of the accused. But somehow or other, whenever you have the so-called presumption, take for example, uh, we have a case of uh, drug trafficking charged under Section 39B. Okay. Take for example, uh, the prosecution does not really need to prove that the accused uh, uh, sell the drugs. There's no need to bring video or, you know, photograph that he sell the drug or, you know, he got linked to the supply chain. The, the, the only evidence that the court will accept there is a trafficking element is that the quantities of the drug is more than personal use and it is in the custody control and possession of the accused. So it becomes like you don't need to prove, you know, whenever there is a presumption, okay? So this uh, section 79 to 90 provide for the presumptions as to documents, okay? So that means to say the person that bring this these uh, documents, whenever you have this sort of uh, section, uh, so it makes your mode of proof uh, much easier, okay? Once presumption is raised in the court, uh, to make it very simple for you, it is for the uh, opposing party to challenge it, you know. The, the, there is a switching of burden, okay, of proof, okay, as simple as that. And uh, this is quite popular also, section 90A to your 90C, uh, computer-generated documents, okay, because of uh, uh, this is advanced era now, eh? And uh, our our this evidence act is actually drafted in uh, not in 1950, you know, it's actually in 19th century. Okay, uh, it is a uh, peri material with uh, Indian evidence act. Okay, some of you may know the order lah, the Sir uh, James Stephen that draft this. So this is an outdated um piece of evidence act, although it is very comprehensive, like cover most of the things. So the parliament, our parliament, added these computer-generated documents, okay? To make the emission of these documents easier. Otherwise, uh, uh, usually this is what opposing counsel will do. Lah. I said this document is not real. So please bring your computer. So it becomes difficult, isn't it? Like that, okay? And you have your section, uh, chapter uh, 5A, okay? Uh, this is not so popular. Lah. I mean, the admissibility of evidence under mutual assistance in criminal matters request. Usually, this is under a specific act. Lah. Uh, I also cannot recall, but this is under the mutual assistance of crimes. Take, for example, this is a syndicate um, that running international scam business. Okay, they have a HQ in Hong Kong and a subsidiary in Singapore. And of course, Cambodia Okay, is their operation center and they have their downlines in Malaysia. So how do we actually import the evidence that collected in Singapore, Cambodia, in Malaysia? So this is... Uh, one of the proviso uh, that uh, our country is helping to curb uh, international crime, okay? Because nowadays online, uh, um, take for example, let's say uh, this person is just a runner for scam, uh, okay? But his HQ is actually in Cambodia. So without this piece of evidence in Cambodia to be admissible in our court, very difficult to charge this person, you know, sometimes, lah, okay? Uh, famous case, you can see uh, Tan Sui Eric Chia case, okay? And, uh, okay, you have uh, your section 91 to 100, exclusion of oral 
uh, by documentary evidence because okay, oral statement, uh, with okay, let's say for example, this class has no recording. Whatever I say is just oral evidence. You do not have the capability to recall every single thing that I've said, isn't it? Particularly the part that I say, I murder my wife. You can't recall, right? And then let's say, for example, this lecture had been recorded into a video. You saw my face and then I did say, and then you can play back to the court. Okay, usually, uh, top practice, uh, documentary evidence will have more weight, you know. The probative value of this particular black and white or in recording uh, thingy uh, will definitely much better than you just recall. Okay, take for example, okay, I did kill my wife and then I did mention in several occasions in my class that I have the intention to kill her. So eventually, one oral witness is just recalling whatever they said. Uh, I mean, uh, she did say in the class. Rather, you have a video recording that show me, okay, I did say so. Which one is more convincing? Of course, the documentary evidence. Okay, so this is how the court look at it. But the question is, whenever you have a documentary evidence to set this evidence already, can oral evidence be admitted to say, oh, this documentary evidence is not so. It is not reflecting the truth here. But rather, the oral part, uh, the oral part that you think I um, said to you is the one by refreshing your memory, okay, in the court, is the is the final ultimate truth okay so usually cannot uh. there's uh, something called peril evidence rule uh. so uh, but of course subjected lah, subjected to some uh, exceptions so this is provided in your section uh, 91 to 100 okay but the popular one will be just 91 and 92 and it's subsect section okay uh and you have to look at your uh, section 101 to 114A uh, for you to know what is the burden of proof and how the parties, okay. Uh, I mean, there's always responsibility. You go to court for a reason, isn't it? And then uh, the court eventually must make a decision. They cannot give you 50-50 kind of decision. Take for example, in civil case, I sue gun for breach of contract. At the end of the trial, at the end of the matter, surely the decision will be whether gun is liable or not, whether gun need to pay me back or not, okay? Or whether I win or lose the case. It cannot be 50-50. All right. So who bears the burden to prove this case and how did the role switch will be determined from this, this uh, part, lah, this chapter seven. This is your burden of proof. Okay. Uh, the most important one, I think 101, 102, remember for your life, 103, 105, uh, 4 and 105. Okay. These are the popular question that you must uh really master at your fingertip okay we'll discuss it lah. and as topper as topper principle you have uh usually this one is civil case lah. you are as top from uh you know you make one promise suddenly uh, can you do something to say oh i did not make this uh let's from your action lah. something like that and you uh whenever you bring a witness how did the witness, what can the witness say? What can be accepted by the court? This other governing proviso, okay? Uh, provided under your section 118 to 134, okay? This has uh, a lot to do with privilege. Huh? Yes, he can say so, but somehow or rather, this statement cannot be accepted by the court because it is deemed 
uh, to be privileged. That means to say protected information. Okay. Uh, we will learn it in subsequent classes. Lah. This is just an overall uh, overview. Okay. And how did we conduct our uh, examination to the weakness? Okay. This is provided under your section 135 to 166. Okay. Uh, can we ask leading question? When can we ask leading question? How do we impeach the weakness? Okay. And... Uh, um can we ask any uh cases i mean uh, any any sexual relationship particularly uh in a rape case all that you must know you know uh in order for you to answer your evidence question and then uh this one not so important okay uh section 160 to 166 not so important and uh uh 167 improper admission and rejection of evidence unlike uk unlike the common law principle malaysia do accept illegally obtained evidence that means to say they don't care this evidence how it is being um, produced okay whether it you 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 get it with uh, you punch the witness until he speak the truth okay or you secretly record the thing. Okay, take take for example, uh, our Prime Minister Sodomi case. The video was secretly recorded. Take for example, lah. Okay, so this is not something by right. It's in improperly or illegally obtained evidence. But still, uh, under this section one six seven, uh, the court can accept. Uh, okay, Malaysia. Uh, accept illegally and improperly obtained evidence, okay? So next, uh, we need to talk about the application of uh, Evidence Act, okay? First thing first, you must look at your Section 2 of Evidence Act 1950. This Evidence Act, I already said to you, it is an objective law. It is a procedural law. This is not substantive law. Eh? This is something to govern uh, the conduct of the councils and also the court. Okay? That means to, uh, to include the judge as a whole, lah, okay? the court officers. It is applied to all judicial proceedings except arbitration and also affidavit. Okay? Arbitration um, that means to say the case was brought to uh, AIAC, lah, for example, for another uh, tribunal. Okay, so we have a, a arbitration act in Malaysia. Okay, so usually apply to those uh, um, construction uh, contract a lot. They will have a arbitration clause. Okay, and affidavit, affidavit is uh, one sworn statement made by the deponent, deponent usually uh, affidavit is used in uh, originating summon or in notice of application. That means to say you apply for a discovery order, uh, you apply for striking out the case under order 18, rule 19, rules of court. Uh, these are when you are going to use the affidavit or in another word, sworn statement by the applicant okay to verify the truth okay to verify the truth so evidence act does not really apply to affidavit and arbitration okay so one more thing is evidence act 1950 only apply to civil court not sharia court okay and uh, judicial proceeding in malaysia it normally refers to evis adversarial court. That means usually got two parties. One, one is plaintiff, one is defendant in civil trial or in criminal trial, prosecution and also defense or the accused. Lah. Okay, very simple. Adversarial. Lah. Whereas in inquest, lah, inquest is just inquisitory. I want to find out the cause of death of a person. Usually, there's no cross-examination. You cannot challenge whatever the coroner's court. I mean, now it's under a special coroner's court now. Okay. Uh, 
So evidence act has no application, okay? In inquest, it's just in case uh, you you uh you need to know about that. And uh, uh application of evidence act sometimes will have a uh, overlapping effect with your CPC rules of court. Okay, <laughs> take for example, uh, if you look at your section one one two statement for the accused would be uh, privileged, but somehow or other section 113 of your CPC will have some special section, I mean special exception, whereby, oh my, uh, if it is uh, section 27.1 EA, it is admitted, uh, some, something, like, something like that. What I'm trying to say is some cases, uh, especially if you have Dangerous Drug Act, uh, MSCC Act, Okay, SOPA, the Sexual Offenses Against Children Act, uh, you must look beyond just evidence act. You may need to import relevant proviso of this act. So, the conclusion that you can draw today, whenever you have MACC corruption case, dangerous drug act, and somehow or other you think this is a special scope of law that you are not familiarized with, uh, don't do. Because why? Sometimes even the burden switch, okay? And sometimes, let's say the child by right should not be a competent witness. But sections, uh, this, uh, the proviso inside SOCA, they said it is okay, you know, for sexual cases. So it makes your answer as a whole wrong. And then you get zero mark. Okay, I hope you get what I'm trying to say here. Lah. And uh, apart from the statute itself, the Evidence Act has also got illustration. So illustration itself is just a help to how you interpret uh, this statute. And in fact, I do encourage you all to have a look at illustration. So you are more aware of the operation of this particular section. Okay, very important. And uh, you do have marginal notes. Marginal note is something like this. Lah, deleted by Act A324, something like that. Okay, this is to tell you what uh, the previous Act had, had gone. Because sometimes uh, there is an argument. I mean, in the case law, they do argue this section. Uh, take, for example, section 26, sub rule 2. But where is it now? Uh, so the marginal note, provide you the information that it had been deleted, all right? So explanation, explanation reflect the intention of parliament. That means to say, what actually the parliament wanted this section to be. Uh, how, uh, uh, as you all know, before the law is a law, it has to be a bill, and then it must be passed and debated in parliament, uh, Okay, lower house then upper house mark, correct? So um that means to say the the so-called intention of the parliament is reflected here, okay, in your explanation. Okay. So types of evidence uh, you can refer uh, to your section three and also section fifty-nine. Okay. So section fifty-nine is partic uh, uh, I mean three and fifty-nine are particularly important to define the meaning. Okay, so evidence means what? Evidence means statements, all statements where the court permits or requires to be made before it by witness in relation to matters of fact under inquiry. So such statements for oral evidence, okay? Make it very clear, uh, statement, uh, pernyataan, uh, is not act, you know, Act means tindakan means conduct. So that one, is it evidence? No. Okay. You can only bring in statement in to the court. Not to, to you know, you want to act like an orchestra in the court. Can you, can you dramatic in the court? Like, do like this, this. Oh, actually, Machona Puko cannot. Okay. Because evidence is statement. Okay. And documents means what? Documents... Uh, the definition is provided in your section 3, la, inclusive of your paper, la, plan, sketch, map, la, and also all the electronic 
dividends. Okay, it is all defined under your section three, huh? And your section fifty nine said that all facts, see, huh? All facts, semua fakta, except the contents. That means to say whatever written by the documents. Okay, all facts must be proved by oral evidence. Okay, get it, huh? Whenever you tender evidence, it could be only statement. Statement that means you call witness lah, to come to court and give verbal, oral. I mean, should not be said as verbal. Lah. Oral. That means you talk. Okay, you, you speak to uh, the court of what you know. Okay, and second thing is documents. So now, the facts must be proved by oral evidence. Okay, get what is it? except for the contents of documents because thought the judge has the ability to read and make his, his own interpretation over the content of documents. That one you don't have to worry. Okay, And uh, documentary evidence, uh, again, it is defined in your section 3. You can further look into it. Like I have told you, the all the papers, la, sketch plan, uh, Electronic video recordings all are deemed to be documentary evidence. You can copy down whenever the answer requires you to do so. And the contents of the documents may be proved either by primary or secondary evidence. Primary means what? It's already defined in your evidence act. And secondary means what? Okay. Usually make your life simple. Primary means original. Okay, secondary means probably it's a duplicate copy or photostate copy, something like that. Okay, uh, so this is what I have talked to you. All this is deemed as document, eh? section three. Please read section three many, many times. Huh? Okay, and um, the types of evidence, real evidence. Real evidence means if you look at your section 60, subrule three. It means material thing, the real thing. For example, in drug trafficking case, what you really see would be the drug, the packet of the drug, for example, amphetamine, the powder of heroin will be actually brought to the court and being marked as exhibit. That means to say this is a real piece of evidence. It's not just photography. Okay. And some of the time, the court may take the trouble to visit the crime scene. For example, a murder murder case of uh, uh, Kevin Anthony uh, Morales, the DPP got murdered. The court did visit the cement uh, area you know, because his body was big, cemented. Okay, so this is how real evidence could be admitted in the court. Okay, it is governed by your section 60, subrule 3. And you have a uh, Direct evidence. So what does it mean by direct evidence? Okay. Direct evidence actually divided into two. First is your physical. Okay. Like I said, two categories of witness. First, you talk based on your, um, how to say, uh, facts. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, you smell, uh, you, you smell some uh, smoke, la, I mean, asap la, in a, uh, let's say a fire accident case. Ah, these are the direct evidence, you know. And uh, wh whatever you think in your brain one, uh, that one is actually uh, expert. Lah. I mean, opinion. Okay? So, uh, these are the categories of uh, evidence I think you need to know. Okay. I have to stop the recording for a while because it's easier for me to 